Well, hello and good evening. Um, I hope this works and I hope you're all well there. My name is Matt Steele. As uh, as you know, I probably teach you guys. Um, I'm going to be going over exam technique for um, Route A uh, or Course A, as it can be known as well. But it's Route A, Unit 1. So let's get started. I'll try and be quick. Um, or I'll try and go through it and try not to bore you, but there's a lot of great material here and it's well worth you listening to this. I hope it reassures you. I know you guys are going to do well because, heck, I'm your teacher. And we're just going to go through. Um, before we begin, I'd just like to mention one or two major, major impo important things. And a lot of this is common sense, but it is all so worth reminding you. Um, j just to stop and just to think about what... What, what you are going to be asked to do. Um, you're going to go into an exam. Um, I'm sure I will put up some sort of, I mean, I, I don't want to do these video documentaries or, or video presentations for, for everything. Um, we can do a little bit of, of um, revision technique and certainly top tips before you even go to the exam, such as things as, you know, make sure you arrive early, take in more than, than two pens, make sure that they are black pens. Um, but you can find that in the, in the college or your school sort of uh, guide box on, on how to be successful in, in exams. Um, so we, we'll move on with the most important thing. Uh, what is the point of answering a question if A, you are going to give the wrong answer or not answer the question correctly. Okay, so it is important that you decode every question. Now, I did, never mind about the word decode, I've used that, but uh, just stop to think about these command words, okay? And they will be in every, every question, okay? Um, the, here's a few, and I will go through them as as we approach each and every question because they, they will be definitely inside those questions okay so you will you will certainly come across words such as uh, these command words will be explain and you need to provide a number of reasons I mean it's easy saying explain but give reasons this happened because uh, this person uh, could do this or this person did that and go into go into reasons go into detail okay um showing how or why each contributed to the event named in question um so we you, you come across a lot of examples as as we go through this this little um presentation um but just bear in mind you can explain things the next one would be to describe you're going to add your factual knowledge and detail that sometimes are even in the sources that they're going to show you but we'll just remember that the, it's if you need to explain you can come out and, and, and simply talk your way through it to describe goes into more specific detail and that that will be about the you know remain to that person or that issue or that event that has happened in history remain you know don't deviate don't go off on one like i tend to do when i'm right in i look at that question and i answer it exactly the way that they want me to that is very very important and speaking of important we can have a look at we have other command words now this will come in to play later on in the um in the exam because as you can see um certain these words will increase in complexity they will increase a demand on you when you write but don't worry about them too much yet because we've got a long way to go and we'll get through this so words such as how important how successful how far i mean if you think if you're going to ask someone a question about how important is it to take your car keys uh before you leave for work and you're, and you're going to be driving then yeah it would be very very important and you would give reasons because if you didn't take um your car keys you couldn't open the car door you couldn't stop Start the car um, it would waste time because you'd have to reach your car then you'd have to come back so that caused you to be late for work so just just I'm giving a, a very very easy example there but it's just something that if you think about it from that point of view then these these command words we use them every day so don't be too scared of that and now that that is cleared up we can move on um, so what is unit one 
It's a study in depth focusing on source evaluation and hence historical interpretations. There's also a unit two and a unit three that you will be doing, but this is unit one. Okay, each unit is different, so we're just going to concentrate on unit one and let's get going because I know this will be the first ones that uh, the first one of the units that you guys do. And the exam paper will test your knowledge. This exam paper is going to test your knowledge and understanding through the evaluation of historical sources and interpretations of the past. Yeah, that is textbook right there. But basically what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to have a bunch of these sources chucked at you and you really need to get into those sources. Um, there are certain parts and I will highlight that you don't need to use your own knowledge so that you're not going to get rewarded for that but the certain questions where i've done my research and i've made sure that i've um studied up myself on the new wjec um strengthened specifications for the for the for the course of 2015 that you guys are going to be fine okay i've got it on sound information that these questions when i say you don't have to worry about your own knowledge you don't okay now you will have to answer all three sections testing your particular skills. Now, I don't want to talk about um, question one for hours and hours. I'll do this in a whole thing because you know me, I'll, I'll rattle on out there and you guys will get bored. So we will do it in nice, easy chunks here. So I'm going to move on. We'll be looking at question one here and then I'll be uploading or you put it on YouTube question two and question three. OK, so. For this presentation, we're going to be looking at question 1A, 1B, and 1C, okay? Each exam will last for one hour and 15 minutes, okay? And also, all questions on this paper have to be answered in Unit 1, okay? All of them. Now, moving on quickly, you can see Unit 1 here, we'll be looking at 1A, 1B, and 1C for this video, and we just go through quickly what those means. You can also see on this side that there is a, a different mark allocated which go up, a 4, a 6, and an 8, okay? So these are going to get progressively harder. Um, when I say harder, they're just going to be requiring more detail, okay? So they're going to, they, obviously, they're going to expect a little bit more from you, okay? So the first one, and this is just an overview, really, of Unit 1, is the selection of information from two historical sources. And when we talk about historical sources, these can be uh, pictures, maps, they can be charts, graphs, newspapers, okay? All of these that come from the past are your historical sources. Another thing to remember is you will be asked to compare certain sources it's always worth looking at the times they did they come from the day contemporary or are they reflective are they primary or are they secondary a lot of people use those words personally i prefer contemporary and reflective sources okay however we can go through and we can see that question 1a is a four mark question okay and it's a selection of information from two sources then as we move down i mean you can read these for yourself the second or 1B, rather, should I say, question, is the use of source material and your own knowledge to explain a development. You will be signposted and you will be given um, the, the nod or the wink or you, it, it will be written when they want you to use your own knowledge and you will get rewarded for that. So you must do that. That's a six point mark. And 1C is the utility of two sources so we're going to look at the usefulness of two sources there and that's an eight eight point mark right there um perhaps i'll remind you guys i think i might put this on a slide for the next videos which i didn't intend to do so i'll rattle down there real quick you were aiming for with if, if you hit all of the marks you're going to get 53 marks okay 53 marks here and that goes to that 53 will be 25 percent of your final course result, which is from unit one, unit two, unit three, and your controlled assessment, which you would have done in class, okay? Just to make sure that you guys know where you are. So quickly, question 1A is a selection of information from two sources, and it is worth four marks, okay? And you'll notice down here that these questions, this, this question 1A will start with what the sources A and B suggest about, 
and then it could be it, it could be on anything okay from the period that you have studied but you will be looking at sources so let's let's see if i can do this via the method of animation or via the method of pictures uh so the skill we are looking for is for you to extract information from two sources that could be written or visual okay so i'll try and use these these pictures there are no marks awarded for own knowledge in this question right so stick to what you see okay so you're going to be looking at two sources so here is an example of question 1a and the question asks what the sources a and b suggest about the condition of the german economy between 1928 and 1933 apologies for some of the pictures here i had to use my mobile phone because uh, i'm not in work so that, and i'm working from home and um, i had to put these together myself so here you have two sources a source a which is a graph or, or, or bar chart which it is in in in, in uh, actuality and you have source b which is from a school textbook and it could be a GCSE one. The name of this doesn't really matter. And it reads in October 1929, the collapse of the American Stock Exchange exposed the fragile Weimar economy. The prices of agricultural products and consumer goods slumped, causing financial hardship for farmers. I've actually written framers there. Small businesses and the self-employed. Food shortages, homelessness and high taxation added to the misery of millions of Germans. My apologies for any little typos or spelling mistakes. Uh, as you guys know, um, it wouldn't be a lecture if I didn't do a duzi. Okay, so here we have a graph and here we have uh, a written extract from a school textbook. Now, straight away, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, I wouldn't even know what to do with these. Don't panic. You just have to use what is the information that is in each of these sources and there is plenty okay i will give you an example um of the answer and this is a perfect example of the answer this comes from the wjc history route a uh, my revision notes which is the uh constructed by r paul evans it's the harder education edition well worth a look great for your revision but please make sure you understand your subjects i mean uh just just learning bullet point or parrot fashion isn't necessarily the key to success although it may work for some so let's have a look at the answer that was given okay both sources contain examples of the sharp decline of the German economy between 1928 and 1933. Source A shows a dramatic increase in the number of unemployed people. The graph shows that the unemployment figure stood at just under 2 million in 1928, but had increased to just less than 5 million in 1931, reaching a peak of 6.2 million in 1932. Now, I will just stop right there and say that's all that person has done, has just got into the graph or the chart the bar chart and is just showing facts that there has been an increase and or, or a decrease of employment uh, or sorry there has been an increase of employment obviously a decrease of work however can you see he's just using he's just pulling out facts or he or she is just pulling out these facts to show that something has happened between these years so the information is there, so you, you can use that. He goes on to say there was a slight decrease in the number of the unemployed in 1933, which is which is great. He's just talking about one source, and he's balancing, because halfway through this paragraph, he's going to start talking about source B now. Okay, Source B indicates what the cause of this rise in unemployment was, the impact of the Wall Street crash in America. It caused the fall in prices of manufactured and agricultural goods, a sharp rise in taxation, and an increase in homelessness and social misery as men lost their jobs. Boy, this guy can write. The two sources reveal that the German economy slipped into recession after 1929 as the country began to feel the full impact of the Great Depression. Okay, let's just have a little look back there at the two sources. It really is in there. Okay, go back to the answer and move on. This guy has, funny enough, it was it, looking at this answer, the guy has added in his own knowledge there talking about the great depression okay but without it perhaps it wouldn't have made sense but whether he would get rewarded for that i have been told by wjc no okay 
but you're not going to lose marks for adding your own knowledge, right? And sometimes it makes it a lot easier and writes a lot um, and reads a lot better. Remember, be kind to the examiners who are going to be marking your paper. Make it easy for them. They'll give you more marks, okay? If uh, it's structured in a way that's easily understood and reads well. They like you for that. I know I would. Moving on. So hints for question 1A. Pick out at least two points from the sources and connect them with historic inquiry. OK, as I said, go into that. Go into if there's a map or if it's um, a, a chart, uh, a, a pie chart or, or a bar graph get into there pull out what's happening is it going up is it going down is if it was a map are these two places close together um compared to their their enemy over this side of the world or perhaps their ally over that side of the world think about that that source is going to be there to give you information okay that's why we call them sources okay and uh, they've been picked for that reason um if it's a photograph and it's talking about the weimar uh, Republic. Uh, it could be that it's something to do with um, the state that Germany was in at the beginning of uh, uh, prior to when the Nazi party got into power. OK, and you need to point out that people were starving. Um, there was a, uh, well, you, you need to point out what is in those sources. OK, so if we move on. Make sure you refer to both sources in equal measure, which that uh, person did. I think I'm going to call him, um, I'm going to call him exam sitting Jeff. OK, so that's exam. My name is Jeff. Uh, exam sitting Jeff and exam sitting Jeff, who is excellent at his history, uh, really gives a balanced answer there. And he pulled out at least two points from the sources and connected them to the historical inquiry. I've just gone back and you can have a look yourself there. It is there. You can't argue with that, okay? But remember, this is top mark writing. It really is, okay? If this is going to daunt you, you're going to feel worried about this, this really is top mark writing, okay? So I'm going to shoot on, and we're going to look now at question 1B. So question 1B is a use of source material and own knowledge to explain a development, okay? And this is going to be worth six marks. OK, so we want you to utilize a single piece of source material, just the one this time. It could be written or it could be visual. Again, these could be newspaper articles. They could come from historians books. They could be maps. They could be cartoons. Um, uh, what else? Uh, they could be paintings. Yeah, they could be a poem. OK, uh, so just just be aware that we do look at sources. Um, they're not going to be a YouTube or presentation or, or may hopefully not uh, not a part. Well, they won't they won't be because it's it's a written exam, but they will be able to you, you use your imagination to think what might come out on the paper at you. OK, and you need to use your own knowledge as well as considering. The single piece of source material that you have in front of you, OK, and you're going to use your own knowledge to explain this particular historical issue or event. OK. The question, as you can see, will start. Question 1B will start with you. Source C, 2, and your own knowledge to explain why. And I've done a little spelling thing there, but I can't go back. So it's you, source C, and your own knowledge to explain why, dot, 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 something has happened. OK, so we'll go into that because I repeat my questions right here. So use, for instance, an example of question 1B is you saw C and your own knowledge to explain why many German people dislike the Treaty of Versailles. We, I know we've gone over this in class. We've talked about, um, I believe I use the method of um, at, uh, the Treaty of Versailles, TOV. Uh, they, were they were given T, so it's territory, economy, and army. OK, that was the three things that they had to um have taken away from them okay so you've got t a lot of land territorial loss okay you have e which is the economy okay which because of the land taken away they lose a lot of their industrial zones and there is also the reparations that they have to pay for and a is the army okay they have to reduce their army a real real small army there there's also the guilt clause, which they are blamed for starting the First World War. But again, this is not going to turn into a revision lecture. This is exam technique. So if we have a look at Source C, it's an extra extract rather from the German newspaper Deutsche Zeltung of June 1919. 
you know your timeline. This is just after the Paris Peace Treaties or the Treaty of Versailles, as is also known. And it says today in the Hall of Mirrors, which is the Treaty of Versailles, um, the Palace of Versailles, rather, the disgraceful treaty is being signed. Do not forget it. The German people will with unceasing uh, means constant sometimes they do that in these questions they will give you the brackets to explain a complicated word so it's quite nice to to think that you're not going to fall down because of um, a word you don't understand cropping up so if i repeat that sentence the german people will be uh, will with unceasing labor press forward to reconquer the place among nations to which it is entitled then will come vengeance for the same of 1919 and you should be able to read into that that they are not happy okay uh, this this newspaper article is not happy with what happened at the treaty of versailles let's have a look at uh, exam setting jeff's perfect answer bam and he comes and he writes many germans disliked the treaty of versailles because they felt its terms were far too harsh they felt humiliated and shamed and referred to it as a disgraceful treaty they disliked the territorial clauses which caused germany to lose 13 percent of its land and six million people and the harsh military terms which drastically cut the size of its armed forces limiting its army to just 100,000 men and its navy to just a small number of battleships. What many Germans particularly disliked was the war guilt clause, which forced Germany to accept full responsibility for having caused the war and to agree to pay financial compensation in the form of reparations. The source say that it must be the aim of Germany to seek revenge and regain its rightful place among the nations of Europe. Okay, so if we move on, hints for question 1b. Pick out at least two details from the source and explain them in your own words, which is what Jeff has done. Okay, you can go back and he, he has put that into his own words, talking about the Treaty of Versailles. He's using his own knowledge um, to explain himself, to describe, okay? And uh, not ask for any evaluation from this question. We are just asked for an explanation so we can really go back there and focus on the command word explain okay so that's what he's doing he's explaining them in his own words and he has demonstrated with his own knowledge that by sorry he has demonstrated with his own knowledge of this topic and provided at least one additional factor that is not mentioned in the source so if you do that you get the bonus marks as well he's gone above and beyond what is in the source material there okay it's connected and it's going to get him those those extra marks you're rewarded for that okay there are huge rewards for your own knowledge in this one okay so try to do that now question 1c and we will be coming to the end of this lecture, I promise you, or presentation, or, or so. Let's have a look. Question one: He asks for the utility of two sources, and this is worth eight marks. Okay, so if I go through this, the point is to analyze and evaluate the usefulness of the two sources for the purpose, for the purposes rather of inquiry. Okay evaluation should concentrate on what the sources say or show the nature of the sources authorship and the date of publication and the purpose of the source i've noticed i need an apostrophe there as well oh, terrible that's the trouble when it doesn't flag up and you're busy and you've got a cold which uh, which i have okay and of course this question will start with how useful a source is d and e to a historian studying and then we'll have something that will fill those uh, ellipse there okay those three dots so for instance how useful are sources d and e to a historian studying the reasons why opposition to the nazi regime increased during the second world war this is worth eight marks okay so we'll move this up okay because we need to have a look at two sources here so the first one, Source A, which comes from a pamphlet published by 50 members of the White Rose Group at Munich University on the 18th of February, 1943. Look at the dates here, okay? We'll go back to that, but when you get a date, look at it. Think about where is that on my timeline, okay? This is written by the members of the White Rose Group, okay? And the day of reckoning has come. This is the day when German youth will get their revenge on Hitler. In the name of German youth, we demand from Adolf Hitler the return of our personal freedom, which he took from us. There can 
be but one word of action for us. Fight the Nazis. Each of us must join in the fight for our future. Students, the eyes of the German nation are upon us. The dead of Stalingrad beg us to act. So we will move that up slightly. That's source A. So we want to have a look at how useful um, these two sources are. So we'll have a look at the second one. And that reads... This comes from a history textbook. But have a look. This source here has been written in 1943. This is a reflective source. This is a contemporary source. This is a reflective resource. The authors, Greg Lacey and Keith Shepard, were told they are historians and they're writing in a history textbook. Okay, So we have to have a look. Um, we have to take their authorship as being quite secure. They are historians. They've gone to print, okay? So, let's read what they've got to say. Hitler had always had his critics in the army, but while the war seemed to be going his way, and Germany had enjoyed enormous success, they kept quiet. However, by 1943, the war was going disastrously wrong for Germany, and for the first time, opposition to Hitler within the army increased. In 1944, opposition centred on a group led by General Beck, and they backed plans by Count von Stauffenberg to assassinate Hitler. And that was the July bomb plot. Let's see what exam setting Jeff has to say. Let's move that up. In you come. Okay. Now, Jeff writes that both sources are useful in suggesting reasons why opposition to the Nazi regime increased during the Second World War. Source A is extracted from a pamphlet written in February 1943 by members of the White Rose Group who were based in Munich University. Now he is repeating certain things there, but that's that's to keep the the actual sentences flowing. Okay, he's you know he's, he's, he is copying from the source there, but we would like to see a little bit more there. Okay, so they were critical of Nazi policies and were calling for the youth of Germany to take action to demand the return of personal freedom and liberties. They mentioned how defeat at Stalingrad helped to encourage the growth of opposition. However. It is a piece of propaganda which was written to persuade German students to join with members of the White Rose in a campaign of opposition. Despite being biased, it is still useful to historians because it shows that some Germans were prepared to take action to oppose Nazism, although it does not reveal how much support there was for the White Rose group. Can you see what he's done there with that source? Okay, now we're going to look at that. He does, he tears it apart, really, and he is thinking on his feet and he is saying the pluses and the minuses. So there is evaluation there, okay? Now, that's the first paragraph. He's going to comment about source B now. So think about it. If you've got two sources, you write two paragraphs, okay? Don't cram it into just the one. Right. A, uh, a paragraph on source A and then a paragraph on source B, okay? So source B provides a de detail on the actions of some members of the military took to oppose Hitler. After the time the war had turned against Germany from 1943 onwards, opposition to Hitler from within the ranks of the army increased. Led by General Beck, it reached a peak with the July bomb plot of 1944 when Colonel von Stauffenberg attempted to blow Hitler up with a bomb in his briefcase. Okay? You might want to watch the film there. That's Valkyrie and it stars Tom Cruise. If you want to get your head around that one, it's Stauffenberg. We'll continue though. While the plot failed, it did show... Uh, spoiled, spoiled the end of the movie there. Sorry guys. While the plot failed, it did show that senior members of the German military were unhappy with Hitler's direction of the war effort and were pre prepared to commit treason to oppose him. The source is extracted from a textbook, Germany 1918 to 1945, and the authors are historians. It was written with the benefit of hindsight, and as Greg Lacey and Keith Shepard were writing for educational purposes, they are likely to have produced a balanced and therefore useful assessment. Okay? However, it only provides a narrow focus and just refers to opposition from the military. Both sources are useful in providing examples of specific opposition, but neither makes reference to how widespread opposition was to the Nazi regime from other quarters, such as the church and the German youth. Now, I hope you can see that these are very fleshed out answers and that these actually reading these will give you more of a feel of how you lengthen your answers and you, you add these details in and always show um, I mean it, it, for this one we are looking that what's not in 
source A and what's not in source B. And sometimes you can compare the two mentioning. As you can see, the White Rose are talking about opposition from civilians, whereas Greg Lacey and Keith Shepard are commenting more about the military opposition that was faced from inside the army ranks, okay? So you can bounce the two. That's that's what um, Clever Exam Sitting Jeff has done here. So hopefully that will give you an insight and a lot of help. So hints for question 1C. I would have to say that you look at the content, origin and purpose of both sources. Use them to your advantage, okay? Content, what does the source say? Origin, who said it? When did they say it? Okay, that's the big thing of looking at the dates there. Was it contemporary? Was it reflective? If it is reflective, a lot of people would have had time to gather a lot of information, certainly if they're historians, and put a more balanced view, as we've seen in that uh, uh, that question. Um, source A is right at the time, and Jeff says, yeah, it is propaganda, okay? But it, it we can still use it. And purpose, why was it said? Who was it said to and why is it biased, okay? Um, again, something I've, I've noticed here, I love my acronyms, but uh, COP, C-O-P, COP, Content, Origin, Purpose. That will suit us. Become a detective of history and be a COP, okay? Make a reference to the usefulness of both sources to the historian. What are the limitations? Well, we saw that in that answer, okay? They, they were too narrow. Some of them could be too broad, okay? It might ask you about um, certain specific history studies, such as what if someone was studying um, the opposition in the army? Well, you come back and say source A doesn't really talk about the army. It talks about civilian opposition, okay? And here has any important information been left out. Well, I think that is of the similar vein there. You can sometimes, if you're lucky or clever, you can bounce the two off each other and say, well, this one talks about um, civilian opposition. This one talks about militaries. Therefore, source A is missing military uh, perspective or viewpoint, uh, whereas source B doesn't consider civilian viewpoint. And I hopefully that is quite a top tip there. Remember that a source can be useful even if it is not reliable and what might it be useful for? Okay, you can always turn around and say, this is not useful to the historian studying opposition, okay? But it could be used for the historian that says, or is researching um, certain m means of propaganda or... Um, the battle of stalingrad and how that led and that the word had spread to people in germany and that they had support for um what happened in stalingrad okay i hope i haven't gone off too much on other time to do and i hope these things do work this will be the the first in a series of three for unit one and if you do find them helpful i will continue to pump these out um just remember that the questions I have used here, the sources, they really may not be coming up in your exam, okay? The structure will be the same, certainly will, but I can't say for sure these questions are going to come up. It's the first year of this exam, and I'm not saying we're going into it blind, but um, like any exam, it wouldn't happen. You wouldn't ha know the questions before you went in. So I will leave you with that thought, and I will chat to you in the next part which is question 2a 2b and 2c and i'll see you again thank you